Well, I'll, I'll start it off a little bit. Uh, here you see uh, our engines firing up, our three main engines, a uh, tremendous amount of uh, thrust there. Well, we were sitting in there and uh, there was quite a racket going on. Uh, we saw that tower go by just, just very quickly. I, I couldn't believe how fast it went by. This is an experience that uh, we'd like to have every week. <laughs> After we got uh, a few hundred feet into the air, we were into the uh, roll pitch maneuver. Bob, why don't you carry on there? Uh, someone else. Well, as you all know, uh, very shortly we, we found ourselves two minutes into the flight here, coming up with uh, the SRB separation. Uh, we, we felt on board and saw the uh, separation of a bright flash across all our windows, and we felt the uh, somewhat of a shock or a jolt as they uh, departed. Uh, the vehicle had been slightly rough. Uh, we felt some bumping and thumping, not more than we'd expected, but a little bit on the way up during first stage, which kind of went away as we got out of the atmosphere, until finally at SRB staging, things were very smooth. And I think this is a very spectacular picture coming up of the uh, staging itself. Boosters uh, do their thing and tumble away from the tank, and pretty soon you'll see uh, some, some tremendous footage of the uh, drogue chutes on the SRBs pulling out uh, and clear-cut proof that the SRBs do, in fact, uh, land in the water and, uh, uh, and are there for us to retrieve. Absolutely spectacular shot here. Fantastic. Meanwhile, we were on the second stage, which, which the only words I can describe it were just absolutely smooth as glass. It's just unbelievable, just kind of a, a, a humming noise in the background, and that's about all you can say. It was just, just so smooth. It's interesting to note here that after Ken lost his SRBs, they diverted all the photography to the SRBs, and we're pressing on. Who knows where <laughs> we are? I would suspect that this time we're probably almost 60 miles high while these are impacting down and probably... Uh, 100 or so miles downrange by now, but uh, we can see here that the uh, SRBs float very nicely, and uh, my understanding is they're retrieved by the uh, retrieval force at uh, Kennedy, and we're towed in and uh, are in pretty good shape. So uh, I think this is clear-cut proof that we do, in fact, uh, get the SRBs back. But we've had Miko now, and uh, after a very smooth ride, we did not feel the tank come off to any extent at all. Uh, Vance puts in a 11-second plus X burn, which captured these pictures for us as these are being taken from the belly camera. We can see the extent of the tank and as we slide up past it during our four plus X burn, uh, you can just see the whole picture uh, working. This was slightly later in the flight. The uh, MS seat has been taken down and we are uh, busy at work. You can see that uh, I don't believe there's much information on tube CRT2, which was one of the, one of the only very minor little problems we had. Just a general scene of the Earth to give you a feel for what it looks like looking out our windows and the extent of the horizon. Opening of the cargo bay doors. Opened the uh, starboard side first as normal and then uh, went right into the uh, opening of the port side door. Uh, our our Pac-Man are in there with the satellites all there. Very shortly after we got the doors open, the uh, uh, next job was for Bill to go ahead and get the uh, sun shields closed so we could protect our precious cargo uh, for that, uh, throughout that first day in orbit until we got into the deploy and uh, launch uh, deployment sequence. And the closing of the last sun shield here, as Bob said, immediately post insertion. I, I snuck a quick peek out of my seat to look at the uh, uh, SBS spinning up. Bill, unfortunately, had to stay up there. I had the, the Columbia was behaving so well that I could, felt I could afford to just go take a quick sneak of it. This is the view that we were looking at out the window, and you could tell we weren't very interested in what we were seeing. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, quilted pattern on the uh, sun shield is really not that quilted. It's just that with the stark relief of the uh, bright sun on the side throwing the shadow. Watch the spin start. 
And this, we think, is what you on the ground saw because this was uh, being sent back by television. And uh, the same view, but from the other window during the deploy. And that is exactly how it looked. The only difference in real life, there was a large and loud bang just as it let loose, which uh, got our attention, believe me. And it was the sound of the pyros firing to release the hold down clamps. That's quite a sight watching that go away from you. We never tired of seeing this site. We had some very good earth viewing attitudes, uh, and uh, this site was just a common one. Uh, the, the so, so was this one. This site. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a medical experiment. It's not clear who's the experimenter and who's the experimentee. <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah. I'm all censored up, and for uh, Joe hadn't yet done it, but the best restraint that we could come up with here was gray tape, so he'd just tape me to the floor, and then we'd press on with the experiment. <laughs> We were tempted to leave and tape it to the floor a lot, but uh, <laughs> our uh, daily exercise regime, this is Vance. Uh, note the, the dop kit floating around there, just, just hanging loose there. This, yeah, the exercise was a great idea. Here we have a scene, uh, Bill, preparing food. No, no, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, all the scenes of preparing food is Overmeyer preparing food, and I, ah, think, I'm, yeah. I think I was a yeah. class cook or something. There's a message there. <laughs> all the people eating were Overmeyer, too. <laughs> <laughs> Marines eat a lot, though. We, we've known that since the third flight. Food was very good, so no complaints. And after but, the but deployment, here was my pay. <laughs> They were really peanuts. Joe says they're banana pellets, but they were really peanuts. <laughs> and uh, even oh. Joe got something to eat here. Some of our pitch about habability, uh, we worked as a four-man crew. It got crowded as times, as you notice. Uh, Joe had a strange way of eating. There he's got it. Yeah. <laughs> watch, the part, watch the parts that have spilled now. Watch that. There you get that one. Get the, there, you got the other one. All and that, that uh, was quite literally a fruit cocktail, and just, just the... Uh, Stickiness kept it on the spoon. Joe cleaned up his plate. This is the famous Vance Brand slow roll in space. It doesn't show up too well, but Florida and the Cape are down here in the background. We are rolling the vehicle as part of a, one of the DTOs associated with the antenna testing. And uh, Watch the sun come across the, the aft part of Columbia. The, the crew it felt a little bit like rolling an airliner over Florida. So one of the neat things is in the sunlight, when it came off the orbiter white, boy, that was white, white. And when you looked out into the nothing, into the sky, that was the blackest black you ever want to see. And in the daylight, of course, we couldn't see any stars behind that black. So we, we had a black sky instead of a blue one. And the second day deployment, this is Telesat as seen from the aft bulkhead TV cameras. And then from the forward bulkhead TV camera, you can see the, uh, I guess this is the movie actually, uh, you can see Telesat emerging from behind the satellite business system sunshield here and looking very much like SBS had the day before. Using the uh, tail as a reference, it noted how, how it tracked right up that uh, tail just without a hitch. It was just absolutely smooth. We could then watch the satellites for many, many minutes after deployment. We're getting ready here doing some of the preparation uh, with the suits for the uh, extravehicular activity that was scheduled uh, by the time we got through moving it around on day five. But this was the night of day three when we were getting ready for what we thought was going to be the AVA the next morning. And I've got the, uh, the EMU the suit TV in my hand and you can every now and then see some of the, the suit lights come floating around. We couldn't resist messing up their camera scene for them, so we, yeah. we came, Vance and I came on down from the flight deck and uh, joined in the, the uh, typical activity. With all of our equipment, the mid-deck got a little crowded sometimes, but uh, having four crewmen on board is really the way to go. Gives you a lot of extra people to do all the work that's needed to be done. Here's the, the suit TV, here's the suit lights, and Vance has just grabbed hold here of the, uh, of the treadmill that he'd been running on earlier. And just a general sense of uh, what zero-g is like. 
Don't get the idea that this was how we were trying to get organized. <laughs> <laughs> this was after we were organized. <laughs> We had a little uh, radio transmitter receiver uh, strapped to our legs, wireless uh, comms, what it's called. Made it very convenient to talk to each other on the ground. In all sincerity, I think we did bring back a lot of good data with respect to the habitability. Here's uh, Joe working on the flight deck with a student experiment using one of our handholds or footholds that we put down on the, on the floor. This was a convection uh, experiment, wasn't it, Joe? Uh, yes, uh, we were... Uh, releasing fluid in pans and then heating it to see if it moved in the same way it does on Earth. It turns out it does not, and it was quite a surprise. Vance is again working on the exerciser while I'm pulling out the theodolite to take the uh, theodolite measurements that we uh, took on the uh, fourth day or third day. Uh, just shows the ease of moving about, just float, just push off one side and push up to the other side. Joe's getting the uh, camera ready for the EVA. We're putting the uh, the thermal wrap on it and then going to put it into the airlock. This was on the morning of day five. Here's and Bill in the airlock. Uh, that's that's me. The, the, the extensive thing here, that's our winter space suit and the lightweight one here is the summer weight space suit. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I was in there uh, at that point having checked out Joe's fan and we had the liquid cooled garment hanging underneath because we needed it connected. And I've finished that, and at this point, what I'm doing is evaluating uh, one or two of the things that we had hoped to look at in more depth outside, in particular, the use of that hook that I'm leaning forward here to connect to a handrail as a uh, secondary restraint. And it comes out of the mini workstation that you can see right up in here on me. And in a minute, I'll go and I'll lock a lever here that'll let the uh, tether no longer come out, and then I'll push and force against that. It may have looked as if he was upside down in this picture, and it just we just had the camera upside down. That's all, actually. Actually, it's sideways. Yeah. Well, that's right, sideways. There yeah. <laughs> actually, obviously, in zero g, upside down is all relative. Uh, if other people look upside down to you, then they're the ones that are upside down. There's Here we're getting ready for the deorbit. We've opened the uh, sun shields on both of the uh, the pams, and we're closing the cargo bay doors. And as we expected, uh, because we had kept the Columbia in a relatively benign thermal attitude throughout the last couple of days, we had absolutely no problems with the doors closing, uh, and uh, they, just, they just worked slick as a whistle. We were just real pleased with it. Now we see the Pac-Man again. Right. Uh, the, uh, just as a reminder, the radiators are extremely shiny, and that's what the reflection on the radiators, the radiators cover the inside of the door, and they are very shiny, and they're reflecting all the inside of the payload bay. At this point, we were uh, getting ready to come home. Uh, I don't think we were all that anxious to come home. We were enjoying it up there. But, uh, we were going to be running out of uh, all the things you need to uh, sustain operations up there in a day or two. It is not true that I ate all the food, so we had to come home because of lack of food. That's not a true statement. <laughs> Doors are really impressive uh, when they come shut. Just uh, very neatly tailored the way they come together and latch. Payload bay went dark, uh, of course, with the doors closed. And here we are in the front cabin. Watch the windows here and over here. Absolutely spectacular footage we've never been, never been caught before. Uh, but might explain that uh, the light up above is uh, switches and lights on switches down below the bright areas around our instrument panel. But now you see the sky starting to turn rust color as the vehicle heats up. And it's like being inside a neon sign a little bit. Uh, it, it gets brighter and brighter and then stays for uh, a good part of the re-entry. We re-enter during the night time and so we could see this rose-colored glow for a long period of time. Here's the picture taken from the uh, TV chase airplane of the orbiter as it's coming in on the approach. We're still above the overcast at this time. We'll pop through the overcast very quickly. Came out below. Of course, we were landing around sunrise. You can see the reflection of the sun off the 
the ship. Makes a, a very nice picture. We were down below 10,000 feet at this point on our 19-degree glide slope coming for pre-flare. Uh, the pre-flare maneuver is just a pull-out at 2,000 feet, which uh, occurs over the Edwards uh, dry lake bed that you see in the lower part of the picture here. And uh, we were shooting to land on a concrete runway, which will come into view a little later. And here we are pulling out, and the gear is down. Uh, it came down at around 400 feet. Uh, Bob put it down. Joe checked that it was down. <laughs> and then Bob and checked, checked that it was down. <laughs> and we rechecked it. And then Vance checked that it was down. <laughs> and here we are touch, coming to touchdown. And Vance knew we had touched, but the three of, three of us, of his crew members, did not. We had to ask. It was as smooth as silk. We had a max, maximum braking test on the, the rollout, and so that's what we're starting to do uh, as we roll out there. We really put the brakes on hard, and then they eased off the last little part of the rollout. Absolutely super glass smooth landing. It was uh, really seriously, didn't even feel a bump when the Vance put it down. It was really uh, spectacular. To we had a, a team effort from 10,000 feet on down on all this uh, landing stuff. And, and right here is uh, where we started uh, seeing the, what looked like the Spanish Armada coming at us, trucks here's, and stuff. And we here's were our out. welcome by the uh, NASA official unidentified on earlier flights. <laughs> <laughs> That's A-B-B-E-Y. 